If you're constantly having to go back and relearn how to perform a drug calculation, then it's time to provide you with a simpler and more intuitive method that's actually going to stick. After all, what good does it do to learn a method and be able to get the right answer on a test question in class if you can't calculate an infusion rate at the bedside and start the medication on your patient? Today we'll be covering a very simple method for drug calculations that will stick with you and you won't have to go back and relearn constantly. I'm Dr. M and welcome back to Synthesis MedEd. The method we're going to be using today is called dimensional analysis. And in this method, what we do is keep the units in the equation, and that will help us set up our math correctly. We'll go into how to do that shortly, but first, I have to convince you that this method is mathematically sound. So remember that anytime you multiply one into a number or an expression or an equation, it doesn't change the value of that expression. And remember also, that any fraction where the numerator and the denominator are exactly the same is equal to 1. And this term can also be multiplied into an equation without changing the overall value. So step one of this method is to understand that anytime you see a fraction that is equivalent to one thing or one unit, that fraction is going to be considered what we call a conversion factor. And you're then going to take these conversion factors and plug them into your math equation. So the easiest conversion factors to identify are those that are equivalencies. Say for example I'm converting micrograms to milligrams. We know that 1000 micrograms is equal to 1 milligram and we can write that as a fraction. This now becomes a conversion factor. Keep in mind that these two values are equal to each other and therefore I can flip this fraction into its reciprocal and still not change its value. The fraction is still equal to 1, and I can still multiply that into my equation without changing the overall value. So now let's actually use dimensional analysis to solve a simple problem. You have a patient that comes in, they say they weigh 150 pounds, and you want to convert this to kilograms. So on the left side, we'll write down the information that we have available to us, which is 150 pounds, and on the right side, where we want to get to, which is kilograms. Now all we have to do is use a conversion factor to convert pounds to kilograms. Now we know that approximately 2.2 .2 pounds is equal to 1 kilogram. So if I write this as a fraction, this now becomes a conversion factor. But I want to cancel out the pounds, and so I flip this fraction into its reciprocal. That gives me pounds in the denominator of the conversion factor. I can then cross-cancel the pounds from this equation, much like I would reduce a fraction. And what I'm left with is units of kilograms, which is what I want. Now that I know I've set up my problem correctly, all I have to do is run the math. So I divide 150 by 2.2, and that gives me an answer of approximately 68 kilograms. Okay, so now let's try some medication dosages. Just a quick disclaimer that the dosages that we're going to be using are for illustrative purposes only, and you should always consult your drug guide for the most current dosage information. So physicians and APCs, this first practice problem is for you. You have a pediatric patient that you have just diagnosed with otitis media, and you decide to utilize high dose amoxicillin at 80 milligrams per kilogram per day divided into BID dosing. Your patient weighs 32 kilograms. How do you write the prescription? The information you've been given is the weight of your patient, which is 32 kilograms. The information you're trying to find is how many milliliters per dose do you want to give them. Since we're going to be utilizing BID dosing, First, we divide our daily dose by 2 to give us our individual dose amount. What we end up with is 40 milligrams per kilogram, and this is our first conversion factor. We line that up in our equation so that we can cancel out the kilograms. Next, we have to look at what preparations of amoxicillin we have available. For this patient, we're going to go with 400 milligrams in 5 mLs. This is our second conversion factor, but we have to flip it onto its reciprocal because I want to cancel out the milligrams. Now that we've canceled all the units, what we're left with is milliliters. And this is the information that we're trying to find. And we know that once we run our math, our answer will be correct because it is dimensionally correct, which means that the units we're left with are the ones that we're actually looking for. So now let's run our math. 32 times 40 times 5, and we divide all this by 400, which results in 16 mLs per dose. And we can now write our prescription for amoxicillin 16 mLs BID of a 400 mg in 5 mL suspension. Practice problem number two. Nurses, this problem is for you. 
You have a patient weighing 68 kilograms that's in septic shock and needs a norepinephrine infusion. The initial dosing will be 0.01 micrograms per kilogram per minute, and you're using double strength concentration, which is 8 milligrams and 250 mLs. So we start with our patient's weight, which is the given information, and that's 68 kilograms, and we want to get to milliliters per hour. Our dose is going to start at 0.01 micrograms per kilogram per minute, and this is a complex fraction, but don't be scared by that because all we have to do is cross cancel the kilograms and now we're left with a standard fraction. We're going to need to convert time to hours. We know that 60 minutes is equal to one hour. That is a conversion factor we'll use and we'll place minutes in the numerator so we can cross cancel that. We're also going to need to convert micrograms to milligrams because that's what our infusion is mixed in. We know that a thousand micrograms is equal to one milligram. We use this as our conversion factor placing micrograms in the denominator so we can cross-cancel that. We then insert our infusion concentration because that constitutes one infusion. Our mix is 8 milligrams in 250 mLs. However, we flip this conversion factor onto its reciprocal to get milligrams in the denominator, and we can then cancel the milligrams out. We're now left with milliliters per hour, which is the answer we want. And now we know that our equation is dimensionally correct, and all we have to do is run the math. Now we have a lot of terms here, and order of operation is important. So in order to run the math correctly, we have to multiply all the numerators together, get a total, then multiply all the denominators together to get a total. This leaves us with 10,200 divided by 8,000, which equals 1.275 milliliters per hour. In order to do this on a calculator, all you have to do is Take the top terms, multiply them all together, hit the equal sign, then hit divide by a thousand, equal sign, and then divide by eight, equal sign, and it will give you the same answer. Now I understand that we're always going to program our infusion pump in order for it to run these calculations for us, but we still have to know how to run these calculations by hand. And now you know how to run drug calculations using dimensional analysis, which I think is one of the most intuitive methods of doing the math. Remember, set up your problem, use conversion factors, flip those conversion factors so you can cross-cancel the units that you need to. When you're left with the units that you want, you know you set up your problem correctly, then all you have to do is just run the math. As always, thanks for tuning in, and remember, don't aim to memorize. Aim to understand, so that you can then apply what you've learned. See you next time.